What is going on everybody and welcome to another deep learning with neural networks Python and TensorFlow tutorial. In this tutorial what we're going to be talking about is kind of getting into the main types of algorithms people are running with deep learning. So most people are not doing like your traditional multi-layer perceptron just alone which is like the deep neural network that we did to start because this isn't really it's not the best solution for really any problem. Uh, so most people end up doing something else and there's two major forms that people usually choose to work with and that's going to be either a convolutional neural network or a recurrent neural network. And you can also have combinations of those two and then there are other models out there and there will probably be more to come. It's just those are the two probably largest types of deep neural networks that you're going to come across. So we're going to cover those two first and we're going to start with the recurrent neural network. Now the recurrent neural network tries to solve a problem that is pretty much inherent that I, I think, I guess probably the first thing to start with is like most people are under the concept that we have only five senses. When really we definitely have more than five. Uh, how many, I don't really know for sure, but for sure we have at least a sixth sense. And it's not that we see dead people. It is a sense of time. We have this sort of temporal sense and physics tells us time could be a whole host of things it might not actually be like a duration like we think of it uh, but for sure we do have a sense of time to some degree so with a traditional multi-layer perceptron just traditional deep neural network feed forward back prop whatever um, we have no sort of um, explanation of time or maybe not even just time, but order. So like the order of events matters significantly. Okay, so for example, if we say, um, if we have like a sentence like, Harrison killed Billy, a traditional deep neural network would not know the difference between Harrison killed Billy or Billy killed Harrison, right? Order is a matter of life and death. So order matters. But also in terms of like, let's say you've got a, a machine that you're trying to play catch with and that machine needs to know is the ball traveling away from me or towards me and, and to know that it's going to know it's going to take each frame basically and decide okay that ball is definitely moving away or that ball is moving towards me maybe i need a duck or whatever uh, order is very important and of course even just with language so for this is typically why uh recurrent neural networks networks are more used with language data and then for like imagery data we use something like a convolutional neural network if we just are trying to analyze a single frame. But if we're trying to go beyond that, usually we're going to use some sort of a recurrent neural network. It might be a, a recurrent neural network and a convolutional neural network tied together. Uh, but generally, like a convolutional neural network is not going to help you with like successions of frames and stuff like that. So anyway, um, or at least to my knowledge, they won't. I could be totally wrong. Anyway, so uh, before we jump in also to the recurrent net. I'm just going to explain what a recurrent net is and then we're going to draw an LSTM cell because an LSTM cell or a long short term memory cell is the most, I hate to say it's the most common, but I think it's the most common. It's one of the most common. How about that? It's better. One of the most common cells that are used with recurrent neural networks. There's also the gated recurrent unit and there's even like a basic recurrent network cell. I've never even looked at it. I couldn't even draw one for you if you asked me to. But anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to do that. But also I just want to address some questions that people asked about AWS and their graphics cards and all the people that are using AMD. So for the most part, uh, TensorFlow, Theano, and all the, other, um, all the other frameworks basically for doing deep learning are going to be the same. They're all doing the same thing. It's all weights and biases or outputs times weights plus bias, right? It's pretty much always going to boil down to those kinds of concepts. So you don't have to be using TensorFlow. So I'm pretty sure Theano has AMD and OpenCL support. So if that's you, then you, you could just go that route. You don't actually have to use TensorFlow. Also, people were asking about, well, why not just teach us on AWS? Well, AWS is really expensive to be doing machine learning on, or at least I would call it very expensive to practice machine learning on. But if you have like a plan of attack and you know exactly what you want to do, and maybe you've kind of uh, tested it on your local machine and all you really want to do is just deploy it really quickly on a gigantic cluster of GPUs, then sure, it, AWS might be a good option and that's something I'd like to learn about down the line. 
so I may or may not actually cover a tutorial on that. I really hate doing those kind of like setup tutorials, like just doing this stuff was a pain in the butt as it was. So anyway, um, we might do that. You can always look into it and see what you think, but it's it's a lot more expensive. You're looking at at least 50 cents to like a dollar an hour for anything decent when you could just go to eBay and buy like a GTX 650 for $70 and just run it overnight while you sleep and that's the easiest thing to do and the most cost effective thing to do in my opinion. Anyway, let's get into a recurrent neural network. On a, on a deep neural network, you had your input data, which was like X, and then it was fed into a cell and then you might have had other X's too and they might have been fed into that cell as well. And they would have weights and all this, but it was just like straight up input data and it didn't matter if like, let's say this is X1, X2, and X3, it didn't matter like what order these things came in. It didn't matter, like nothing, no, nothing about order actually mattered in this case. Now with a recurrent neural net, the way things work is you've got your, let's say your input data, we'll say this is just X1 for now. So X1 gets input or sent into whatever your activation function would be. So let's just say A for here. And then under a traditional neural network, we would just simply have output. That's kind of like the traditional neural network. But with a recurrent neural network, what instead we have is the following. Besides being output to O, the output, we also recur right back into that cell. So the output now becomes part of the input the next time around. So this is basically let's say at t, at time step zero, you just have this coming in to the activation um, cell. But then at time step one, oops, I went too far. <laughs> at time step one, you have this coming in and also basically whatever was output here comes over here, right? And then goes right back into that cell. So that's kind of that why it's called a recurrent neural network is we have this kind of notion of uh, re repetition. So another way to look at this is like this. So at each layer is basically, you know, you've got like your new input plus the input from the previous input. So from X1 to X2 to X3, we're kind of bringing along with us the previous input data. So if you think about a sentence like Harrison drove the car where each word is a feature, so our features then would just be like Harrison, comma, drove, comma, the, comma, car. And then maybe we have like an end of sentence character or something like that, but we'll just ignore that for now. In a traditional neural network, Harrison drove the car is treated exactly the same as the car drove Harrison. So in the former case, we have an ordinary vehicle under the control of a human. In the latter, we have a self-driving car. So recurrent neural networks are basically trying to to solve this sort of sequential temporal problem. And it, you don't actually just simply have to use this on a temporal type of problem. It doesn't have to be something that is inherently temporal. So one of the first examples that we'll use it on is actually the MNIST data set. And it actually does quite a bit better. I guess I can't say quite a bit better, but it, it gets in theory or in practice quite a bit better return. Anyway, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, I think it's kind of silly people fight so much over tiny percentage increases like some stuff It really does matter like in self-driving cars. You need that to be as as perfect as possible 100% You need to understand the, the blob of tar versus a baby in a blanket, you know kind of situation But there are many times where that like itty bitty percentage difference that means everything to some people I think doesn't really matter that much, but anyway um, so that's your recurrent neural network and from there, we actually have one more thing for me to draw for you all, and that is the LSTM cell. So a lot of people, the recurrent neural network is great, but it, it becomes even more impressive when we implement the LSTM cell. Because if you think about it, what happens if like, what happens when you have like really long sequences here? you're probably gonna have a lot of data that doesn't even necessarily matter, or maybe you only need like one of the cells to remember that, or you know, you don't need every cell to remember every little bit of data that has come in the past. You only really need one of the cells to remember it, and then maybe there's even some data that you don't even, you don't even need to remember. 
So for the LSTM cell, just take note that basically the LSTM cell is in here. It's this cell that's right here. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be drawing next. So with your LSTM cell, you're gonna have, as usual, some input data that's gonna come in. And then of course it's going to spit out some output data. But what's magical is what happens on the inside. Draw our nice big box. Hopefully that'll be enough space for me. We will start with the recurrence. So this recurs around. And the first thing we have is what is called either a keep gate or a forget gate. Basically, obviously they mean pretty much the same thing. It's like from this information, from like basically the previous information that's recurring around on us, what do we want to keep or what do we want to forget? So the first thing is just the question of a, uh, I'll, I'll call it a for, forget gate. It's really hard to write letters that small. Anyway, so that's your keep and forget gate. So the first thing is what do we keep? What do we get rid of? And then from there, you've got your input, right? This, this X input that's coming in that's coming in and then we have a question of what do we want to add so we'll say um, add what so from this new input what do we want to add and then finally we have the question of what do we want to output so again, as the information recurs around, you've got your forget gate or your keep gate, whichever one you want to call it. From there, once we've decided, we've got a, a block of some information, basically. We're going to send that on to the addition. What do we want to add from the new input that's being added over here? So what do we want to add? From there, we are going to decide, okay, what do we want to output? And what we output obviously goes back, goes back up here and then out here to the actual output that we're gonna actually spit out. All right, so in the next tutorial, what we're gonna do is apply a recurrent neural network to the MNIST dataset by simply modifying our model code from the previous tutorials to just be a recurrent neural network rather than a multi-layer perceptron. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.